Hello and welcome once again to the Real Jeff Armstrong Podcast. So glad that you're here. As always, I'm ecstatic about it. And it's very, very good to be able to take a few minutes to be able to sit back, sort of recollect about the day, and enjoy sort of rehashing what I have taken in and digested and then being able to share it here with you. I value you being here so much. And the big goal is that whoever does actually listen to this, that you'd gain something from it. So, you know, during today's episode, you're going to you're gonna hear me chit-chat a little bit about a few different things. I do want to get into talking about why problem solvers are so highly valued and how you can be a problem solver in your industry, how you can become one. Okay, that's another thing we'll get into. So, I hope you've had a wonderful day so far. I spent a lot of time on phone calls and a lot of time uh, doing all sorts of stuff today, really. Um Spent a lot of time looking at, uh, what did I even look at? Gosh, uh, <laughs> this may sound a little bit interesting. I lo- spent a lot of time looking at shotgun parts. <laughs> so um, I never thought I would be on a podcast talking about shotgun parts, but here I am. So a number of years ago, my dad had given me a shotgun, right? And uh, it's, it's really a shotgun that you would use for when you go bird hunting. So it's like a the barrel's like 26 inches long. So, you know, for those of us that don't know a whole lot about shotguns, 26 inches is a fairly long barrel. Like if you were going to use this shotgun for some sort of scenario where you wanted to like, maybe you were concerned there was a, an intruder in your home, you wouldn't want to be using a 26-inch barrel, okay? So I had kind of taken this upon myself to say, okay, well, I think I'm going to buy another barrel, so I'm going to get like an 18 and a half inch barrel, okay? Long story short, to not get too far into this, if you've got an 18.5 inch barrel, if someone did break into your house, you would have less of a chance of them being able to like hit the barrel and knock the gun away from you, especially in this scenario when you're like going around a corner. So if you're wondering about what I spent way too much time today doing, it was looking at shotgun barrels. Um, and a few other shotgun-esque things to take this shotgun that my dad had given me and kind of soup it up a little bit. So that's uh, that's been my day, and um, you know I did spend a lot of time kind of learning some new things about. Um, you know, okay, so like one of the big things that I've gotten to gotten into over the last, mm, I would say about the last two months, is looking at how to build an email list and deliver content that's actually good and helpful for people, and then for the people that actually are ready to receive more specialized help, moving them into a place to where they understand how they can get help and then providing them that help. So that's been another big thing that I've been working on as of late. And so, you know, today I had sent out an email, right? And um, the emails that I've sent out have gotten pretty decent open rates, I've been pretty happy, and it's all focused on it currently. It's all SEO, right? So I have I have a, a, a have SEO students essentially that are learning how to use SEO, and they generate leads through ranking on Google. Okay, and uh, there's a lot that goes into that. We get into branding because you can't really separate SEO from branding, in my opinion. And so we get we dive deep into a lot of stuff, and so it's a very very thorough. Uh, framework, a very thorough program. But, you know, I had to send out this email right today and I sent it out and realized that I did not update the link. And so the link, when you clicked on the button in the email, it went not where you were supposed to go. Right. And, uh, so I was like, Oh my gosh. Ah, so what did I do? Right. I, uh, I whipped up another email as quick as I could and typed in the subject line, sorry, sent out the wrong email. (laughs) And then I, uh, you know, I, 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 sent out this next email and um, I don't think anybody was mad. I don't think I've gotten any unsubscribes or anything like that so far. So that's good, you know, but that has required a lot of problem solving because, you know, believe it or not, an email list is still one of the number one ways that you can generate um, really, I don't want to say generate revenue because that's not necessarily the focus. I mean, yeah, you do need to generate revenue to be able to run a business, but an email list is traffic that is under your umbrella that you can 
that you can you essentially control the algorithm. You know, for those of us that have used Facebook and Instagram and these different social platforms, and of course now TikTok is getting more and more popular. You know, there's an algorithm, right? Especially those of us that are familiar with Instagram. There's an algorithm that is not very friendly, right? And so that algorithm is something we can't control. Now, same with Facebook, right? Like if you ever have done Facebook ads or you're planning on doing it, guess what? You, you don't get to control all the things that go into making decisions about who should see ads, when they should, when they should see those ads. You don't get to make decisions about posts and organic reach, any of that. But an email list is a little bit different because if you are building a tribe, you know, you, you're, you're providing value to people because you're solving their problems, right? Then you're able to essentially control that al- algorithm because, I mean, the peop- everybody gets the email. I mean, maybe they get more emails in a single day or something like that. But, you know, I, I fairly regularly see 40-plus percent open rates. And, you know, maybe that's not the best, but that's way better than what I get on Instagram or Facebook. You know, if I, if I, if I post something on Instagram, if I get, I would say, let's see, if I get 1%, of people that actually, like in, in terms of impressions, that's doing pretty good. Now, I'm not the Instagram expert really by choice. I, I just have not enjoyed Instagram a lot. We've done it. I've gotten business off Instagram. Uh, I still use Instagram. I'm not saying Instagram is bad. I just don't, to me, the return on investment just wasn't super, super good in terms of how much effort I had to put into it. SEO, email list, um, and even paid ads are things that excite me a lot more. And so the, being able to control an email list, um, the email list algorithm, and deliver useful problem-solving content to a group of people that have opted in for that very thing is actually, if in, ter- in, in the marketing world today, that is still the number one way to generate consistent income. Okay. And, and it's really all about creating a tribe, right? Like if, if there are people that identify with the movement that you're creating because there actually is legitimacy to it, other people will relate to that. They'll opt in, and they'll actually be excited to hear what you have to say. And guess what? If Instagram's like, oh, yeah, we're going to switch up the, 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 the algorithm, well, email list, you can't do that. So, you know, the main topic that we were really supposed to be talking about was, you know, problem solvers and why problem solvers are so valued and how you can become one in today's world. And I, even in this current climate, I don't know of any better way than being able to know a group of people, okay, a people that you can relate to, that you want to be around, solve their problems, and your problems, right? Like, and if you more likely you have things you're passionate about, and you've already solved problems that have helped you move on to the next level, in one way or another, right? Like, if you're we we spoke about this, I think, in yesterday's episode. If you're a four, you can teach people in terms of being on a scale from one to ten, from or a zero to ten. A zero being somebody that doesn't know anything about it, to a ten being an expert. You fit somewhere on on that scale, and you can help someone else. And most of the people are probably going to be at the very beginning of that scale because, you know, um, experience and skill is kind of like a bell-shaped curve, right? So there's a lot of people that are beginner slash moderate. And as you ascend higher and higher up, there's fewer people that are like that. And believe it or not, there are many, many skilled individuals that, do not actually seek to solve people's problems, right? I always think of like the NBA. Just because you're in like a star NBA player does not necessarily mean that you would be a good coach. And if you're a really good coach, it doesn't necessarily mean that you played in the NBA, right? 
So, and I'm saying this as someone like I'm not even that into. Uh, I I enjoy basketball, like playing basketball, uh, but I'm not like I don't watch the NBA. <laughs> so I will if it's on, but you know, so don't hear me saying so that uh, that you have to watch the NBA to understand how to be a problem solver. You don't. Um, I'm living proof, <laughs> but you you don't necessarily have to be the expert in order to help others. But if you can understand a problem and then have the patience to work through it and understand it and then break it down into steps, then you can be a problem solver, okay? And problem solvers are highly, highly valued because they are relieving people's pain. You know, so if, you, if we understand people's pain and we're intimate with understanding someone's pain, then we, we know how to speak to them and then we know how to lead them in a direction where they have future focus, right? Because if we have pain, what helps solve that pain is a hope, a, a future vision that something's going to relieve that pain, okay? So that's why, you know, like today with my shotgun barrel, right? The pain was, uh, you know, I've got this cool shotgun that my dad gave me. Um, I think it would be cool that, like, if somebody broke into my house, I, w- I would be able to use it. You know, but like the pain is that what's well, a twenty six inch barrel that's like really long. You know, so the solution to that would be to me having a shorter barrel. Well, someone out there in the world has decided they were going to make an eighteen point five inch barrel for my shotgun, <laughs> the the exact shotgun that my dad had given me. You know, they solved that problem, so I'm willing to take my money and give them that money in exchange for. That barrel, they're solving my problems. And so it relieves that pain that I have that, you know, could be the potential of if someone did break in my house and I had this shotgun with a super long barrel, then I come around a corner corner and they go whack and whack it. And then, you know, it's bad news from there. So the, they solved my problem. And for that, I'm grateful, even though I had to give up money. So if you can solve people's problems, whether you're in a service business or if you're, you know, if you, if you're looking to get into like course creation or digital products, all you have to do is find where people are congregating, okay? And then listen. If you can listen and think through problems and develop step-by-step solutions or even if it was a product, whether it's a digital product or even if you're like, "Oh, I can create physical products." If if they can perceive that that product can relieve their pain, then they, then people will be willing to give you money for it, okay? So problem solvers are so highly valued because they are actively relieving people's pain. And if you think about it, it's sort of a beautiful thing, like that there are people that have actively sought to remove people's pain. Now, you could say, well, it's, it's uh, you know, it's just capitalism and and, like, you know, it's just people that are greedy and, you know, to a degree, I, I, there are people that are greedy and there are companies that are probably just looking to make a buck. But I would argue that a lot of the entrepreneurs and a lot of the people that, that are solving problems, they probably realize that they do need money to be able to survive, right? That's not a bad thing. It's very true. But I would, I would say that most of them really do want to have impact. And so for a problem solver to be really, really successful – in a long-term perspective, both externally and in your internal world, you really have to shift from saying money, money, money to impact. How can I impact people's lives in a way that sustains me so I can impact their lives more? Because that's that's really where we're going to be happiest, you know, is where we're making impact. Now, again, I think some people are, and, and I'm not saying it's bad, some people are less, they have less of a need to feel like they're helping others. I don't know those people personally. Um, maybe they wouldn't want to say that. You know, there's some people that are maybe more of like true entrepreneurs, right? Like they just want to start businesses, make the buck, move on. I'm not saying that, again, I'm not saying that's bad. Um, I know that's not me. I That's not me. I can't live like that. I, I have a deep yearning desire to be able to help people actually achieve results and get to the next level in their lives. So, 
for me, I find that joy in being able to say, oh, look, I can, I can solve your particular problem because I'm intimate with that problem. I've worked through that. I've gotten results for myself, from, for others. I'm familiar, and I have created a framework that can help you to achieve the next thing that you're trying to achieve. So the thing is, not everybody can help everybody with everything. You know, you've got something very specific to you that you can help people with. There are skills that you have and particular perspectives that you have that you can that you can help people with. And there's people that will relate to you in a way that they won't relate to somebody else. And this is why like I I hear people pretty regularly. They're like, "Yeah, I thought about, you know, doing this product, but you know, there's just I feel like there's so many other resources out there." And I get that. You know, I mean, you don't want to necessarily go into like if you're wanting to produce a product, um, you, you don't want to be like, oh, I'm just going to produce the exact same thing as somebody else. But the truth is, like if you have a if you have a personality in a particular angle, where you can give someone a new opportunity, you're not just improving on so and so's method, or you know, you're not just offering some um, like, oh, it's cheaper or whatever else. Those are those can be really tough battles. Okay. But if you have a particular personality, okay, if you're you, if you're being you, and there are other people that resonate with that, and you're able to intimately understand their their problems and present them with a new opportunity, then they will gladly make you their problem solver. Okay? They will make you their problem solver. And that's, that's a beautiful, beautiful thing because, I mean, that's how we... Really, that's how we make progress as humans in so many ways. It's where we have people in our lives that can speak to us in a particular way because they have a particular perspective. And that's why people develop, like, they develop brand loyalty, right? That's why people open emails. When there's a million emails coming in all the time, there's still people that open up emails, believe it or not, and email lists are still the most highly rated way of being able to have a long-term following. You know, so the moral of the story is, is be a problem solver, be listening, be attuned to what people's problems are. And practically speaking, if you're not in that position yet, then figure out what you need to do in order to, you know, if, if it's develop passion, you know, if you're like, I just don't think I have any particular passion, start experimenting, figure out what you actually have interest in and the things that you really have interest in, begin exploring those more and more and then begin developing mastery. And as you begin developing mastery and you begin um, being able to answer questions, you know, that, that people have, and you begin being able to find where, you know, the people that are in that same sort of interest are congregating, and you begin to listen to them, and you begin to be able to work those things out in your own mind, you will develop opportunities to be able to serve others. And if you can develop those opportunities to serve others, then you will have unique opportunities to be able to create different lines of income as you make impact. So that's how you become a problem solver. That's how you get highly valued um, within among people that are looking for some help with solving problems. And we just, as human beings, we need different eyes speaking into our lives. And if you can be that for someone, then they will ensure that you're able to keep on relieving their pain. So, that was a mouthful, and um, but I hope that's really, really helpful. I, I've just seen people, way too many people have the mindset of, you know, I just don't think I can do this, or I just don't think, um, you know, I'm unique enough, or you can come up with a million different reasons. The timing isn't right. But, you know, if if you have the determination, if you can just say, you know what, the goal is worth it. I'm just going to do it. What I've found, because, again, I'm speaking from experience and seeing other people too. If you will have the determination and say, I am a problem solver. I'm going to develop. I'm going to pick some, I'm going to find what I'm passionate about. I'm going to develop my interests further. I'm going to develop that mastery. I'm going to congregate with the people that I want to congregate in amidst this particular topic, I'm gonna I'm gonna gain the ability to be able to to provide helpful answers, and then I'm gonna develop 
the ability to be able to further that into a place where it actually can increase income. You can do that, it, but it does take small steps in a specific direction, small, consistent steps, which what was it like two, three days ago I had a podcast on the, um, the power of small, consistent steps. And, um, you know, but if you have a vision and the vision is worth it, then small, consistent steps are very, very, very powerful. So it's a, a lot of it's about mindset in terms of saying, okay, you have to come to a point where you, you choose scarcity or you choose abundance, right? Where you choose fear or you choose action orientedness. Okay, and I say action orientedness in the sense of love, being able to say, you know what, I could sit here in my fear, but instead I want to be active in being able to provide value to others. And there's a very, very, very black and white contrast between those states. And fear will tell you, oh, not today, not today. But confidence will tell you there's a mission. There are people that I have been uniquely developed in order to serve. And only I can serve them. And so I'm going to take the next right step. And that's what it's about. That's why problem solvers are highly valued, and that's how you can become one. So, as always, so glad that you joined me for these few minutes here to be able to talk about some of the things that um, some of the things I'm passionate about and I hope are helpful to you and that you become passionate about them. I've seen the results that they can bring people. And as always, I hope the best for you and you have a wonderful rest of the day.